Hi, my name is John Trengove. I'm the director of The Wound, which premiered in the Panorama section in Berlin. Hi, I'm Kate Pansikhur. I'm one of the producers and the casting director of The Wound. Hi, I'm Nakana Torre, and I am the lead actor in The Wound. Welcome, Kate, Nakane, <laughs> and John, director of The Wound. Thank you. Thank you. You've been just arriving, you've been performing right now. Yeah, I was um, performing at the ZDF party. I played a few songs. It was really nice, actually. I enjoyed it. She was dancing most. Always. <laughs> In Always front of the, the camera. Most. Yes. I see. <laughs> so, John, what drew you to the subject of matter? in the wound? Um, well, there were two, two ideas that sort of happened at the same time. The one was that we wanted to make a queer South African film. Uh, the other was that there was this very interesting rites of passage into manhood that uh, myself and my co-producer were quite interested in exploring. Uh, and it occurred to us that to do the two as as one, to, to set this story about same-sex desire in this very specific uh, rites of passage into manhood uh, could potentially be a very interesting film and some potent subject matter. Yeah. Actually, you have been working on a previous, like you working on this subject of matter on a previous film of yours, it was a short film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually the short film uh, came about while we were developing the wound. So it was all sort of part of the same research that we were doing essentially for the feature film. Um, but the short is, uh, is an adaptation from a chapter uh, uh, of a book by Tando Polozana, which, uh, who, who is my co-writer. Um, and it's a book that he wrote on the initiation process, a novel. Um, and so in the course of making the film, we thought it'd be interesting to maybe do this small adaptation almost as a, as a kind of a dry run for a lot of things that we wanted to test and also to present the idea to financiers. So you have been screening The Wound. You were well premiered at Sundance Film Festival. That's right. Yeah. And you have been screening here at the Panorama section. You were actually the opening film of Panorama. Yes. Mm -hmm. How has the reactions been on the film? <laughs> Fantastic. No, I think, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really, really positive and overwhelming yeah. actually. Yeah. I mean, I think you sort of get a, an idea of the reaction with the Q and A's, yeah. mm -hmm. and then because people are really passionate and they want to know more about the film and they want to understand sort of the nuances of the film, and then you think that's finished, and then you're sort of about to go home and walk out, and people are still sort of really overwhelmed and they still want to discuss things with you about the character, about the story, etc., etc. So it's been really, really fascinating. I've, I've I've liked. I've, I've, I've no, liked I, th I think yeah. it's, it's really been so uh, overwhelming and amazing, I, especially uh, in the interviews that we've been doing. That the the press have really kind of um, they've they've really thought about the film. Yeah. They really kind of think about the the details of the film. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, as a, as a filmmaker, it's, it's, it's very moving when people engage with something, you know, uh, on, t on a level like that. Yeah, particularly yeah. in Berlin, they've been engaging with John on a filmmaker level and really mm. trying to understand what he was trying to say with the film. So mm. that's been great for John, mm. yeah. Mm. I mean, I think it has been quite interesting for you and also very hard, like, to pick up a story as a white man. You're, you're like, fascinated by this ritual of initiation. Mm -hmm what's like, not, not of yours, like this is a completely different world. Mm. How did you get into this kind of 
mindset of this initiation? I mean, well, usually people can't, or like the men that have been in this ritual, mm. can't talk about this, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, we, we, we decided to focus on something very specific, and that was about uh, same-sex desire. Mm. Uh, and, and how that happens in the context of, of the initiation. So, so we had a very clear point of entry and we did a tremendous amount of research around the ritual. Uh, we, we gathered a lot of testimonials and interviewed a lot of uh, young men in the course of writing the, the, the script and casting the film. Um, so it was really a kind of a... It was, it was really a question of me taking this sort of journey into, into this world and, and really trusting the people that I was working with uh, to sort of help me find the story. Um, but I think as a director, certainly I, uh, I surrendered more control than I've ever uh, done before, precisely because it is something that was so far outside of myself and I, I really had to kind of go and find it with, with my cast especially. Mm. Yeah. I think this is one of, the, one of the best parts of it is that it was collaborative. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, before I ask like, something about how the atmosphere has been on the set, I do wonder how important was it like, to have a co-author? Mm. Essential. No, absolutely essential. So Tando is a, a closer man. He's been through the initiation himself. Like I said, he wrote a, a novel about the experience. So, so he was uh, absolutely instrumental in, uh, in putting the story together and uh, filtering a lot of my own ideas about the story uh, through his his own sort of lived experiences. Yeah. So we spoke already about like the atmosphere on set. I mean, I think it has been quite interesting in front of the camera. Only men. Mm -hmm. So and like only black men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How has it been for you? How has it been for me? Yeah, for you or like I mean behind the camera as a producer i mean it's like it's a it's a very special i mean there's like barely films what but only you have like a male setting i mean i think it's a it's emblematic of what the film is about really mm. right so the film is about on some level masculinity mm. and also just the fact that no one else is allowed in that space except mm. also boys who are going through the transition from boyhood to manhood and their caregivers and their fathers, etc., etc. So, just from a technical point of view, from a cultural point of view as well, no one else would be allowed in, the, in, in, in that area. So, um, I never, I, I, for me, it, I, I never thought that there would be actually even um, a question because that's part of the culture that no one else is allowed, it's, it's a secret rite of passage and no one else is allowed except the people who are taking part in the culture, those people who are helping the people who are taking part in the culture. Yeah. Okay. I know you are a singer and songwriter yes. and this was like your first role as an actor. That's right. How did you come together, you and John? John was in love with me. <laughs> <laughs> John stalked Nathaniel <laughs> for, yeah, a long time. Um, so I just released... <laughs> Not really. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't a little bit. We, we won't edit the interview. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, no. What happened was um, I just released my album, Brave Confusion, my debut album, yeah. and mm. I got a phone call from John who said he was interested in me, hope, um, maybe composing the music for the film, and I was ah, excited. Okay. When he met for a coffee and had all these ideas. And then we met again, and then the second time, I think, the second time, yeah, John said, would you be interested in auditioning for the film? And I was like, ah, I don't know. I mean, I, I did acting a little bit in school, but not really seriously, and I've never really acted on screen. So John was like, well, if you shit, then we just won't cast you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, and I like a challenge. So I was like, hmm, okay. So, and then I went and I sort of did a lot of research. Um, I mean, I've said this in quite a, a lot of interviews that I surround myself with people who are like-minded, who are sort of like me. So a lot of my friends are queer, or a lot of my female friends are sort of like very staunch feminists, etc., etc. So, and with with surrounding yourself with these people, you sort of start to believe that the world is like that, that it, it's in, in that bubble, mm -hmm. and you forget what the outer world is like. So I sort of needed to pull myself out of that world and and take myself back to sort of my childhood, to those men, and um, sort of remind myself of how they sat, how they talked, how they drank, how they, uh, how they smoked cigarettes, etc, etc. So I did my research, did my audition, 
killed it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I don't know if I killed yeah, it. Yeah, you are. No, I'm. <laughs> I, you know, the first the first uh, day that I met Nakane, I just had this in, almost an instant feeling like, oh my god, this this could be Polani, this character that I've been uh, writing and and developing. So. I, like he, like he says, it was a long kind of process before it was sort of official. But but there was an almost instantaneous kind of recognition for me that I'm I'm very happy. It was like two years. Yeah. 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 It paid off. Yeah. <laughs> Kate, yes. when did you get on the process? So I first met Jean and Elias, my producing partner, at the Durban Film Mart, which is part of the Durban Film Festival, our largest festival in our mm -hmm. country, and where they were still pitching the project. And I immediately was just, I was like, in whatever capacity I need to be involved in the film. Um, and apart from producing, I also cast direct. So John and I had a conversation and the timing just never worked out. We kept trying to make it work, it just never worked. And then eventually it did work out. And I, he was like, can you just kind of help out with this one character, see how you do? And I did that killed it and then he was like okay we're very humble. Yeah. <laughs> we're very humble. and then he was like no okay, would you mind just like kind of cast directing the entire film so I spent a year and a half by myself with a camera putting I've lost count three four hundred men on on camera um, to come up with the cast and it was a immense privilege buzz balls <laughs> Yes, yeah. I went to many bars, many malls, Facebook. many drunk castings on my phone, <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, I stalked a lot of he people on Facebook. Of people. I but, did, but it was. I mean, it, uh, it, sorry, yeah. just to just to jump in, like it was a. Um, we knew we had to kind of cast wide. Yeah. Uh, we we really wanted to find some very interesting characters, people who. It was more about uh, people. That, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. People who had a first-hand experience of the initiation yeah. and. and uh, so, so we sort of steered away from the more kind of conventional actors yeah. uh, and took a lot of time to, to cast in this sort of non-traditional uh, way. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think we were both thrilled. I think it really paid yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. I did wonder if there were like any discussions coming up like, or like a, I mean, about like this ritual. I mean, about this man. Every, every man like had the same experience. So did you talk about this like before the actual shooting? Or was it like I did topic? in the casting. So in, to kind of carry on with our unconventional kind of trajectory we were on, I didn't do any performance with anyone when they came in for the casting. So people would come to my house and have a cup of tea and we would talk about their experience of the ritual, their thoughts around it and basically just get to know each other and then based on that John and I would review that and whoever was interesting we would bring in and then John would kind of work on performance stuff with them. So through all those conversations what was immensely interesting is how similar but at the same time completely different everyone's experiences were. It was that's why it was such a privilege for me because I came into this thing as a woman, complete as a white woman, completely separated from this ritual, and I got to know it in a very intimate but in a very humane way because I was getting it from you know direct testimonials from people who I was just fortunate enough that opened up to me, and that's why whenever we have a screening, I just. I'm a mess and cry about everything because I feel like the cast, even the old grandpas that are like 80, are like my children, oh, you know, who are fantastic. But I, yeah, I have a very deep emotional connection to the work, so it's it's very special. Yeah. Are you looking forward to screen the wound in South Africa? And what kind of <laughs> reactions do you expect? <laughs> Uh, well, I am looking forward to it very much, yeah. yeah. I think the film was very much made uh, in reaction to a South African industry and what was going on in South Africa and Africa at the time and is still going on. So the film really exists to be, to make a contribution to, to what is going on there or to just maybe make a contribution to a conversation yeah. that I mm -hmm. think is, is very important. Um, in terms of what the reactions will be, well, I think it's, it's, well, it's safe to say that there's going to be some controversy, that there are uh, people who, there are, there's a contingent oh, really? who feel that yeah. um, a film that speaks about the initiation, which is taboo, is, is problematic in and of itself. 
Uh, added to that, there's this sort of homosexual kind of plot uh, yeah. that sort of makes it doubly complicated. Um, but at the same time, there are already like very strong voices and supporters of the film emerging, and people who are really excited to see it and who believe that a story like this is uh, really needs to be told. Yeah. So. The film is going to be divisive, like I think all the best ones are. <laughs> <laughs> One last question. I mean, South Africa is known to be a queer or like the rainbow nation, right? Mm -hmm. And it has a very progressive LGBT <laughs> rights. You are laughing, that's quite interesting. But mm. what's the reality like? And especially like, I'm, I mean... Go on, good question, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I mean... Okay. I just think uh, that's quite a simplification <laughs> of what we are, really. I think South Africa is quite complicated. Um, I think South Africa was sort of advertised to the world as this rainbow nation mm -hmm. after apartheid. And what we've seen in the recent years is that that's not necessarily the truth. It's like people are still dealing with a lot of wounds that were inflicted by imperialism and apartheid, etc., etc. So South Africa is sort of in a space right now that is in flux and dealing with that. And it's really exciting because there are a lot of there's a lot of dialogue and a lot of people are vocal about how mm. they feel and how they feel things should happen. So it's really, really exciting. Um, on the queer side of things, I mean, we have a really liberal constitution in the sense that we are, I think, the third country in the world to legalize mm -hmm. same-sex marriage and adoption, et cetera, et cetera. And, but the reality in the world and in the community is a little bit different. So there still is a bit of homophobia in certain spaces. Um, and then there are spaces in the cities that are completely free where you can be whatever and whoever you want to be. So you, you're living in a country that is sort of like multi-layered and you mm -hmm. sort of have to navigate all the spaces all the time. Yeah. Yes, Kate? <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like it's my space to talk about because I'm not a yeah. queer person. So no, John no, no, but I think, I think very well said. You know, we um, past the sort of honeymoon phase yeah. where there was a tremendous amount of you know goodwill and optimism and yeah. I think there's now a lot of rebellion and a lot of questioning and a mm. lot of painful ideas are, are being brought up and coming to the surface basically what you said and it's an interesting time it's an interesting time and the world yeah. is definitely a film what, like for this time this yeah this yeah course. yeah exactly good yeah. luck mm. good thank luck you. for the teddy award thank, thank you, you very much. in Berlin and thanks for coming thank, thank you, you. It's great to be yeah. here yeah. <laughs>Name is John Trengove. I'm the director of The Wound, which premiered in the Panorama section in Berlin. Hi, I'm Kate Pansifur. I'm one of the producers and the casting director of The Wound. Hi, I'm Nakana Torre, and I am the lead actor in The Wound. You've been just arriving, you've been performing right now. Yeah, I was um, performing at the ZDF party, I played a few songs. It was really nice actually, I enjoyed it. She was dancing most. Always. In Always front the of the most. camera. Yes. I see. <laughs> so, John, what drew you to the subject of matter in the womb? Um, well, there were two, two ideas that sort of happened at the same time. The one was that we wanted to make a queer South African film. Uh, the other was that the okay, no, God. It's a love. Layers are here. It's a good quality. Oh, God. Okay, Pinda. Pinsan. Welcome, Kate. Lakani. <laughs> And John, director of Hi The Wound. Thank you. Thank you.
there was this very interesting rites of passage into manhood that uh, myself and my co-producer were quite interested in exploring. Uh, and it occurred to us that to do the two as, as one, to, to set the story about same-sex desire in this very specific uh, rites of passage into manhood uh, could potentially be a very interesting film and some potent subject matter. Yeah. Actually, you have been working on a pre 